want to demonstrate. Now, I've had rotator cuff surgery, and prior to having the surgery, I couldn't get my hands this high. Okay? This is one exercise that you can do with your stretch band. You can do this way, do that way. It increases range of motion and flexibility. It works your core, your back, your shoulders, and your arms. Another exercise that you can do with the stress ball, I mean stress, stretch band, you have a long piece like this. They come in various colors and various gauges of thickness. You can step on it with your foot and you stretch up. Everybody got that? Okay. Okay. The next piece of exercise that I'm going to show you is exercise from a chair. You need not be mobile to do exercises in a chair. I'm going to demonstrate. You can do leg extensions. Up. Down. Up. Down. And make sure you do both legs. This promotes stimulation and circulation in the lower extremities. If you're in the bed, you can't get in the chair, you can do scissors. Okay? You also can do ankle rotations, points and flexes, forward and back, forward and back, and circles. Little mini circles, go the other way, this develops the calf and Achilles tendon, as well as the muscles in the foot. Okay. You can also do this in a chair, if you're able. And you can work both things at the same time. That way you're doing the upper body and the lower body. Getting it moving, okay? All right, the next exercise that I'm gonna demonstrate <coughs> are ankle weights. There should be an ankle weight rotating so you can look at it. You didn't notice, but I have on an ankle weight. You can walk around with these and you can change the, um, the weight of the ankle by taking out one or two pieces of the magnets in there. And this strengthens the calf and tones. All right, my next piece of equipment is the barbells. Okay, there's simple exercise you can do with this. This is for the, the biceps and triceps. You can do it like this. You can also do this. It's important to lock the elbow and just move the other arm. And you can do it this way as well. This gets the upper shoulder. And if you have difficulty Getting your arm up there, you can hold it and brace it with the other one. Okay? These weights come in um, gauges as little as one pound up to 500 pounds. So it's very important that you ask your physician if you're able to start a regimen. You have to be heart, heart healthy as well as have your blood pressure intact. And you should also have uh, water or Gatorade nearby while you're exercising because it's very important to stay hydrated. Okay. Now, if some of you can't afford uh, the barbells, you can use soup cans. Just make sure that they're both the same size and do the same exercise with the soup cans. Okay? And guess what? After you finish your exercise, you can have a healthy meal of soup. Okay? Alright. The next piece of equipment is a cane. I'm physically challenged because I have balance difficulties and I can't comfortably get up off the floor. So this is an exercise I do in bed every night uh, and was particularly helpful with my rotator cuff recovery. Do arms close together, move your arms to the end of the cane, hold it, 
go down. I do a minimum of 60, okay? And if you take a break in between exercising, just make sure that it's no longer than two minutes because you want to keep your heart rate going so you can get that blood circulating, okay? Another exercise with this is for the elbow. Push this way. And if you don't have a cane, you can use a stick or a broom, okay? And you do not have to be walking to do this exercise. You can do it in the bed, all right? Okay. All right, this next piece of equipment is my special. Um, it's the wheel. This wheel belonged to my mother, and believe it or not, today would have been her birthday and she would be 85 years old. So she's with us, okay? This is the wheel. The wheel strengthens the core and the abs as well as the back. You can either do it on the floor if you're able. I'm not able to do it on the floor, so I do it uh, by a secure wall or door. And this is what you. This is how you work it. Take your time. Roll up. Roll down. Roll sideways. Come back. Roll up. And that's the wheel. The wheels work the abs and work the core. Okay, folks. This is the beginning of the rest of our lives. You can use it or you lose it. Would you like to join the challenge and exercise and look good and feel better? Thank you very much. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ms. Young. Thank you. All right. I'm sure we can all agree that we all can use a little exercise in our lives, right? Yes. You know I mean? Not only the ones that are singing here, you know what I mean? You can go to the gym if you like. No problem. But most importantly, talk to your doctors. You know, make sure it's the right regimen for you. Breathing and stretching helps you when you do your exercises. Makes your muscles loose. Don't tense up. You know what I mean? So the moral of the story is, don't be a slouch. Get off the couch. <laughs> Next speaker here to talk about a healthy diet, Mr. C.F. Thomas. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. All right, I'm here today to let you know that if you eat healthy, you live longer. Unfortunately, many people think that a healthy diet is only about removing foods, not adding, not adding them in. The list of the 10 best foods to eat focuses on what you should be eating, <coughs> not on what you shouldn't eat. All of the foods below are nutritionally dense and are loaded with either antioxidants, lean protein, fiber, hard and healthy fats. You'll feel fuller and more satisfied after eating them. Remember, this list is intended as a starting point. There are tons of other healthy foods out there that could easily have been included. First one on the list is egg whites. Egg whites are one of the most concentrated, easiest, easily absorbed forms of lean protein on the planet. Low in fat, but high in protein. Egg whites can be a great addition to a healthy diet. Number two, oatmeal. Looks great. Oatmeal and oats. Speaking of breakfast, oatmeal, oats, or oat grain are one of the best choices to start your day off right. It also has plenty of slow digesting complex carbohydrates. It keeps your energy level up. Oh God. And your blood sugar. Your blood sugar stable. Beans. Number three. Beans. Can dry or refry. It doesn't matter. Beans are wicked good for you. Like oatmeal, the beans are extremely high in fiber, which keeps you regular and may reduce the risk of certain cancers and heart disease. Number four, quinoa. This ancient staple of the Inca civilization is one of the healthiest grains you can eat. It is relatively high in fiber, complex carbohydrates, 
and it's one of the only plant-based foods that I all nine of them. And since you asked this, this makes me that we're talking about the trials. <laughs> Making it a complete protein. It's available in red, black, white, and yellow varieties. Next on the list is fish. Fish has always been a great source of lean protein. It has a class of healthy fats that research has shown may reduce the risk of coronary heart disease. These healthy oils and fish can improve circulation as well as improve your mood. Wish I had some now. <laughs> Almonds. Almonds and other nuts like walnuts, pecan, Brazil nuts consistently make the cut for the, one of the 10 best foods to eat thanks to the high level of antioxidants, healthy fats, and high mineral levels. Regular consumption of nuts, especially almonds, has been linked to reduce risk of cardiovascular disease, type 2 diabetes, and certain cancers, and possibly heart Alzheimer's disease. Number seven, fresh vegetables like cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, Brussels sprouts, kale, and radishes. Refer the research from the University of Berkeley has indicated that one of the compounds of fresh vegetables may have been potent anti-cancer properties and suppressed cell proliferation and prostate cancer cells. Number eight, apples. Yes, in every day, takes the doctor away. And that's why they earned a place in the 10 best foods to eat Hall of Fame. Research indicate that regular apple consumption may help reduce the risk of colon cancer, prostate cancer, and lung cancer. Number nine, berries. Berries like raspberries, blackberries, blueberries, cranberries, and strawberries are all like apples and fresh vegetables. They are extremely high in antioxidants, low in fat, and are a good source of fiber. Last but not least is our salad greens. While green leafy vegetables are a low calorie source of antioxidants, vitamin trace minerals, those greens can be run by sliding them in heavy mayonnaise or cream based dressings. Opt instead to dress them with lighter vinaigrette. <coughs> Cold pressed oils like olive oil, nut oil, Avocado oil. <coughs> and these oils are uh, and these oils are heart healthy and heart friendly. Don't forget healthier greens like kale, spinach, which can be even mixed in green salad, a great addition to soups. Dark leafy vegetables are a great source of vitamins and minerals, and can provide a flavor boost of all kinds of soups and dishes. <sighs> so. So you try to include all of these healthy things into your diet on a regular basis for best results. And remember, when you eat healthy, you live longer. You let your body know you care. Thank you. Give him another hand. Mr. Thomas. <laughs> Thomas, I'd like to thank you for that. Yeah. I personally eat almost everything you said on that list. Well, maybe not beans. You know what they say about it. <laughs> <laughs> the more you eat, the more you be by yourself. <laughs> so, <laughs> did y'all ever notice that nowadays, instead of a food pyramid, they got a plate yeah. and they break it down to where now this is how you should eat your meals, you know, 50% greens and vegetables. One quarter lean meats, the other quarter whole grains. They call that three square meals a day, huh? I don't know how you get a square meal out of a circle and a triangle. <laughs> but hey, it works. 
and up. But if you eat every meal like that, you burn your calories faster, help you lose weight more, quicker. So I guess the moral of this story is, don't buy the junk food, buy the hunk food. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> so next up, I want to uh, welcome Miss Arnetta Sojourner Johnson. She's going to tell us about keeping our bodies well groomed. Miss Johnson. you all came out this afternoon. It is truly a pleasure that you're sharing with us our presentation about look good, feel better. Um, I want to assure you, before I go any further in it, about myself. I had lived a life one time of 16 years of not grooming myself because where I was in my mind setting, I was hurting. And while I was hurting, I didn't do too much of my personal hygiene. Some of that I just didn't do. From where I was, but where I am today, I feel good and I look good. <laughs> How to feel better about yourself? A, tip, a typical reply to this question will resolve around feeling good about yourself. By increasing your confidence, self-esteem, and levels of happiness. But no one talks about the practical aspect. What are the things you should actually do, be doing to feel good about your own self? This post rips apart the ambiguity and looks at things you can do to feel happy, value, and worth more than a million dollars. I don't have a million dollars. But I'm worth a million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like a million dollars. Go. I ain't gotta have that money. But what I got is what I got. <laughs> I'm worth right. a million dollars. Here are some tips to guide you in promoting healthy life. When I look at that right there, I didn't do that. Like I should have been doing that. <laughs> <laughs> that woman over there look comfortable. That's how you look good. And you feel better. In that tub of water, I couldn't do it. I had a client. As you all know, I'm a CNA. And also, when I give my client her personal care gift, I love to hear this woman say, Ooh, that feel good. <laughs> oh, I feel better. She began to lotion herself, you know, just to assist a 93-year-old woman to do this before my eyes. I just, I'm thankful for that. So we got to look good to feel better. Be sure to take a bath every day. <laughs> every day. Take a bath. It is vital for you to take a shower. Take a shower to make you feel fresh. It is also needed in warding off infections and diseases caused by dirt. You can use shower gel, soap, bath foam, or any other cleaning supplies which you are comfortable using. Next. <laughs> Brush your teeth. <laughs> I'm going to tell y'all that. Y'all looking at me and I'm smiling. I'm smiling with no teeth. Yo, I, I want to say this here. Because see, I got it like that. All I got is what I got. And, and you know, I take care of all I got left. And I want to say this to you because I ain't got it. Brush your teeth. <laughs> I mean that. All kinds of ways. Do the tongue. Do all you got. I still do it. I still use a toothbrush. You know? So, um, brush your teeth at least three times a day or at the meals you have. Remember that oral hygiene is crucial in maintaining overall well-being and health. For sure, you do not want to be humiliated for having bad breath. Or black. It's, we got to do this. We got to do this because when we go out and we communicate with people, you don't want nobody sitting amongst you like that. You you know, to somebody say hello and you like, hello. Because of what you smell. You know, this is what happens when we don't take care of our mouth. 
And that's what happened to me for within those 16 years. I end up with what I got left. So I'm encouraging you all to brush your teeth. So, right, is that right, y'all? Yes. yes. Okay. Before any problem occur, be sure to start the habit of brushing your teeth regularly to avoid the accumulation of bacteria and microorganisms in your mouth. You should also visit your dentist regularly to check your teeth for problems. Next. I hear sharp. Mm -hmm. Be sure to have clean and neat hair always. In that 16 year, my hair was messed up. But right about now, I keep it fried, dyed, and laid to the side. <laughs> I have to do this. Comb your hair and design it according to your preference. Be sure not to let it get frizzy and dry, especially when you have long hair. Remember that hair is the crowning Glory of a woman. I know y'all know about that, right? Yeah. You gotta take care of that. You gotta look good. Feel better. Um, you can use hair conditioner or hair spa treatment solution to keep it healthy and glossy. Be sure to choose hair cosmetics which are safe for you and for your hair. So look good. <laughs> Y'all see them feet over there? No. Oh, right. We can talk about that. I've seen them like that too. You got a set of pretty feet. Of his feet. <laughs> <laughs> of ugly feet. Okay. I, I like my feet. I got pretty feet. I'm talking about this is what I think about because I look good and feel better. I came to this place. Be sure to keep your. Uh, be sure to trim your toenails. See ya. <laughs> And fingernails always, always clean your fingernails. You know, um, I believe that the, the reason for that is to keep that dirt from being up under your nails like that here. We touching things all day long. And it's also good to have hand sanitized, you know, for every so often that you need to take that time and that break and just get all, free your hands from all the germs. Mm -hmm. Remember that dirt can accumulate underneath your nails. Thus, it is necessary that you keep it clean always. Remember that you use your hands when you're eating. Remember that, whatever we doing, because it goes in our mouth. And if you fail to clean them regularly, microorganisms, germs, and pathogens will enter your mouth through the food you eat. That's why sometimes we can get sick, and really we think we're sick because we did this. It can be because you ate something. You know, and with dirty hands. So you wash your hands when you eat, wash your hands before you cook. Whatever you do that you know you need to wash your hands, wash your hands. <laughs> Next. That kit right there is like for your personal. You can carry something. We women carry stuff. Right there in that bag. To check ourselves, right? Got to keep that. Be sure to keep your skin by bathing and washing it regularly. Use lotion because we ain't trying to look ashy and feel ashy. That kind of hurts sometimes. Your skin, oh yeah, it does something to you. Avoid breakdown to avoid breakdown or dryness. Be sure to use soap and lotion which do not contain harsh and toxic chemicals that you that can harm your skin. There's, that's that type of kit that you have, and that goes for the men too. I'm, I'm not gonna forget y'all. <laughs> I'm trying to get a mummy. Y'all, y'all go ahead. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Okay, next. See him? Y'all see him? Avoid body odor and perspiration by using deodorant and antiperspirant cosmetic. Remember that your perspiration affect you overall smell and odor. And I was there. I didn't care about that. I was doing what I was doing. I ain't admit this. I'm not ashamed to admit where I was at. I was out there in that world. I lost 16 years of my life unaccounted for and behind the back with um, not using the personal care. You know, I did not feel good. I couldn't feel better. But by following the tips and suggestions, you can be sure to have clean and healthy living so that you can look good Feel better. Make sure. Take a bath.
Arnetta, Sojourner Johnson, amen. amen. <laughs> I don't think I need to mention anything more than that. <laughs> so the moral of this story is, if you smell sour, take a shower. <laughs> you got to do something about that. <laughs> oh man, now, does everybody get this information now? Yeah. Y'all looking good? You see how we can do this? You think in about six months to a year, your body looking good? You feeling much better? You eating right? You exercise, you know what I mean? Go out and get that nice dress and everything you need to get. You think that, you know, you're on the right track of doing that. Now, a lot of us here taking vacation, if not all of us, I know I take enough for a pharmacy myself. But we, we have to do it. So, here to tell us about taking our medication, we <coughs> held in Africa, so forgive us. Um, forgive us right now, his accent is a little thick. You can follow along on the board as he speaks to us about our medication. Mr. Noah Afuake. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Noah Fuape. I'm standing in front of you to tell you how important you should use your medicine. And everybody hear me clear and understand what I'm saying. Yes. Okay. Let's go by drugs, medicine, pill. Whatever you call it is called medication. Medicine. The doctor believe in it, they call it power of medicine. In some uh, advanced technology, they call it medicine miracle because they believe in it. They are bold about what they put together to heal you, to cure you, to prolong your life. By definition, drugs chemical substances that affect function of living things are in treating, preventing, and diagnosing disease. Numerous drugs of natural origin also are available. These are obtained from plants, animals, minerals, bacteria, bacterium, and fungi. Drugs of natural origin. These drugs include Antibiotic derived from the growth of media of bacteria and fungi, and they use it in treating body as penicillin, immunization agent, vaccine, shot, boost, it's cancer and stamina disease, is operation. Drugs produced by pharma. Pharmaceutical businesses throughout the world prescribe a uh, decision for without prescription. The so called patient medicine or over the counter medicine and vitamins, minerals of their use to keep you healthier and longer life. People don't take medicine because they think that it's a uh, Side effects that the good they do in the body. Don't let it be scare you. That's the reason the government come in and force the description of medicine. And the, there is a other department, the government, that if you have any side effect in your medicine, you report immediately. The danger of drugs. Many are dangerous chemicals that can cause serious, sometimes fatal poison. Use incorrectly and use inappropriately of the government in the control of the drug. Governments of various countries therefore have established certain legal concerning drug use. In the United States, for example, control of drugs is based on all and act on under the Federal Food Drug Cosmetics Act, which is called FDA. The purpose of the government 
regulating and building the kind of the drug use that against potential hazard of drug and fraud. In the United States, the, the government came and they publicized there in a lot of occasions <coughs> to name drug by name and their physical property information <coughs> concerning all these drugs. So, the role of the government take very serious effect that the good of doing your body is more than the act they do. The effect of the drug body in order to exert its action a drug reach its target size in equal quantity. The amount of the drug that reach a target size depends on the pain to the rules administration it can be used only and be used by injection or by IV to most occur to the visual organ the body by plasma called me Society that are dangerous. 
the most common drug in our society that are dangerous is cocaine. This cocaine is processed from the actual coca leaf. The end product of this cocaine is uh, they filter the coca leaf from the from the natural origin. They use it to cure some disease in the body and to put you to sleep. And uh, when you use excessive spray, you get hooked up in it. Cocaine is in use in the tropical anesthesia of the nose and the throat. It causes it can be sniffed or smoke. The conclusion of this drug is that all these drugs have a greater advantage than disadvantages. If there is any side effect in your drug or medicine, please consult your physician. It can prescribe the alternative <coughs> for the use. Wellness, living longer, healthier life, use your medicine. The stronger may do many, the weak do little, the dead do nothing. Mm -hmm. Therefore, use your drug. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Noah Apuape. Oh, man, medication. <laughs> Not all medication has side effects, either, you know, they're good or bad side effects. You know what I mean? The, the fact that we take these medicines due to the illnesses we have, all of them are connected in a way that if you, you know, do what you need to do and do what we're telling you here to follow along to feel good, you know, feel better, it's all connected to your weight, heart disease, diabetes, you know, bone uh, aches, arthritis. All that is connected to weight. Weight gain got you on these medications. So it stands the reason that if you lose the weight, you can maybe come off these medications. <coughs> and you'll feel better about that. I know I will. Well, the moral of this story is if you're feeling ill, take a pill. <laughs> all right? <laughs> so listen, we're going to keep it going. Next up, we got Mr. Darrell Sawyer. He's gonna uh, he's here to tell us about how we can live better, look good, uh, living on a budget. Thank you. 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 Th
Family discussions over the budget could reveal differences in priorities that may often cause conflict. Conversations to address the underlying priorities will correct the problems and reduce the disagreements over money. Since money is much since money is such a stressful part of marriage, identifying discrepancies before they become an issue can do a lot of good. Reduce the stress. Now, I wish y'all wonder why, how would a budget reduce stress? You wouldn't be so worried about a lot of things if you want a budget. So, um, having a budget can reduce stress. The following budget throughout the years give everyone an accurate picture of the financial health of the family. Guesses are no longer required to determine if large purchases or vacations are affordable. When annual expenses are budgeted each month, sufficient funds will exist to pay your bills when they become due. Building new habits. Efforts to stay within a budget will build new spending habits that can be maintained over time. Working within the budget can shift actual expenses from unnecessary categories into the most essential household categories. Money will be available for most important expenses and debt reduction becomes possible. You should now have all the information needed to help you create a budget. So go ahead and total up your monthly expenses to total up your monthly income and all your monthly expenses. Subtract the expenses from the total of your income. You'll either have a positive or a negative number. If you have a positive number, congratulations. You are spending less than you earn. Don't worry if you have a negative number. The whole reason for creating a budget is to identify efficiencies and find out how to address them. While budgeting requires some time in early months, learning to maintain a budget will pay dividends in ways never imagined. Schedule monthly budget review to stick to a strict plan to bring budget to bring the financial offer of the family in line with the goal. Reward the family for staying within the budget. And remember that not all money is not now, and remember that not all rewards are monetary, which means that um, if you look good, you feel better by using your money. Don't, don't say that money, you don't have money if you look good and you feel better. Money saved by sticking to a budget will enable the family to do some things only thought of, like going out to dinner as a family, going on vacation to the amusement park for the summer when the children are out of school. Find children, find the children those new sneakers we thought they, that they wanted. Find mom a new dress that she had her eyes on. To find dad those little fishing poles he wanted. These are only a few ideas that can come. These are only a few ideas that the family can do when a budget is in place. A budget in place, all the family will look good and feel better. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sawyer. I don't know about you guys, but in this economy, I know I'm on a budget, or you all should be. You know what I mean? So the moral of the story is, to stretch a dollar more, why not shop at the dollar store? <laughs> 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 all right, we're going to wrap this up a little bit. Up next is Miss Brandy Jones. She's here to talk about the hardest thing I think we all should, we, we should be able to do, and that is to keep a positive attitude all the time. So, Miss Brandy Jones. Now, is everybody happy? Yes. 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 God knows I am. Now, let me ask, how does one go about establishing a more positive attitude as a daily habit? Does anybody know? Does anybody have any ideas? Well, I have a question. Who besides me thinks about being positive on a daily basis? Oh, good. We have some takers. Nice. <laughs> That's a beautiful thing. You see, it starts with surrounding yourself with happy, supportive people. That's the most important thing. I have five simple steps to becoming more positive. They're very simple. Step one, know that happiness is a choice. It's up to you to decide whether to be happy or unhappy. Don't let outside forces decide for you. See, now I have this little analogy, right? Think of a bottle of soda. You got this beautiful bottle of soda. You wanted this bottle of soda. You unscrew the cap and something distracts you. 
you put that bottle of soda on the table, you leave it there for a week. What happens to that bottle of soda? All the fizz wears out. It gets, it goes dead. It's no, it's fizzless. It's nasty. Well, don't let somebody twist your cap. Don't let you become nasty. Don't let you become stale. Don't let somebody make you stale and nasty. Don't let anybody twist your cap. Okay, step two, know that you cannot, and I repeat, cannot surround yourself with negative people or things. This will definitely sway your decision on how you feel. Sounds pretty simple, right? Okay. Step three, look for the positive in life. In every person, in every situation, heck, in everything, there is something good. A car accident, well, hey, you're still alive. You made it through. Somebody broke into your house, but hey, they didn't, stay, they didn't take that big screen television. You still got that, right? Thank goodness. Sometimes you just have to look for it, but you can find something. You have to look hard, but just ask yourself, what's good or positive in this situation? You'll almost always find something. Step four, practice being positive to yourself. Tell yourself you're awesome. Tell yourself you love and accept yourself just the way you are. Compl compliment yourself as often as possible. When you see your reflection, say, you know what, I am pretty. You know what, I am darn handsome today. I look good. You don't have to like everything about yourself, but don't worry about the stuff you don't like and concentrate on the stuff you do. Don't concentrate on the negative. Step five, and this is the most important step of all, share your happiness with others. Don't only be positive with yourself, but share it with everyone else. We all know that yawns are contagious, right? If I were to yawn right now, how many of you out here would yawn with me, right? I see a number of you would yawn with me. Well, guess what? Smiles are contagious as well. Give a smile and share a friendly hello with everyone you pass during the day. And if you do that, you'll realize just how good you'll feel on the inside. See, people appreciate pos positivity, and the more you share it, the more you'll be practicing it in your own life. Living a positive, happy life is also good for your health. If your mind is unhealthy, your body will follow suit. If you're depressed and unhappy, you'll be less likely to take care of your body. You'll be kind of like, oh, you know what, I just don't feel like getting up out of bed today. I know I gotta take my medicine, but to heck with it, it can wait. And you don't take your medicine that day, and next thing you know, it just stumbles along and it goes on and on, and next thing you know, you're in the hospital because you didn't take your medicine, because you didn't feel good, because you let yourself get depressed. It's a, it's a really bad cycle. So if you're depressed and unhappy, you're less likely to take care of your body, and you're less likely to take care of yourself. But if you use these five easy steps, you can live a happy and healthy life. So choose to keep a happy and positive outlook, and choose to be happy. Life is too short to be miserable. You can do anything at all, but it starts with a positive thought. That's all it starts with. Smile when you feel like frowning, laugh when you feel like crying, and dream when you have a moment alone. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Be positive. Be positive. I absolutely positively like that information. <laughs> All right. Now, we heard some things about a lot of different topics here today. You know, you think you took something away from this that you can use? You know, you get yourself feeling good, feeling better. Now, that the hard work is out of the way, it's time to relax. It's time to have some fun. Maybe take a vacation. Who knows? You know what I mean? Wikipedia defines relaxation as the state or act of being relaxed. It also uh, refreshes the body and the mind. It also defines vacation as a period devoted to that time of relaxation. So they go hand in hand. So once all the work is done, you're ready to go by that two-piece, go sit on the beach somewhere. <laughs> you know what I mean? Take a nice, uh, cozy vacation. You don't have to go overseas. You can go right in your backyard, barbecue. You know what I mean? You can sit in front of a fireplace, sit in a hot bath, close your eyes, let your mind run. You know? 
Well, a lot of us like to go to those places where you got the nice sandy beaches and the crystal clear blue sky water and just laying out there with a nice cold drink or something like that. Cancun, Hawaii, you know what I mean? Jamaica, it's all good. <laughs> I personally want to go to Las Vegas. Sorry, there's no, no beaches there, but it's gambling. Hey. But there's pools. Get in the pool. I can't swim. I'll be the one on the bench. <laughs> so positivity, positivity comes around. Negative people are around us every day. Uh, it could be your next door neighbor. It could be your family and your friends. So the moral of that story is, if you can't change the people around you, change the people around you. You know what I mean? It's hard to do because it might be your family and your friends, but that's what you got to do. Now, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry. Back to the vacation we all done and it's all good. you well deserved and everything. I just want to say one last thing. Uh, a few years ago, I attended a seminar when I left work to uh, you know, work from home, make some extra money. And it was a um, seminar on the deregulation of electricity. I don't know if y'all heard about that. That started here in Pennsylvania a few years ago. Uh, I only went because it was something new. It was a ground floor. Every other ones I went to always was saturated. Nobody made any money but the people that were on top, you know. But this was on the ground floor, and this was one I actually saw my money back. <laughs> you know what I mean? I actually got a check, and I say, hey, you know. But had I been better at network marketing, I probably wouldn't be sitting here today. But I know, you know, that's all neither here nor there. The speaker that I heard speaking and said something to me, not to me, but to the crowd, sorry, that resonated with me. And he said, you can do whatever you like in life, whatever you want. Or you can make excuses, but you can't do both. You know what I mean? We can sit here and choose to lose the weight, or we can make excuses, but you can't do both. You can sit here and make more money. You want to go out and do the dance and do whatever you want to do. Or you can make excuses. But you can't do both. You know what I mean? We here at the BBC, we'd like to encourage y'all to come join us in looking good and feeling better. We're going to take a break, have some snacks over here, if you choose to. Or you can make excuses. But you can't. You can't do both. Do both. <laughs> so the moral of this story is, do you. Don't make excuses because you can't finish what you never start. Thank you very much. We'll take a 20 minute break. We'll be back.